Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. There are two wolves fighting in a man's heart. One is called love, the other, hate. Who am I? I've tried to shed my past, but it claws at me. The prophecy is coming to fulfillment. Run and you may live. Fight them, you will die. What will you do? Kill as many as I can. want to introduce it this week dan all right i've got the imdb page up about the movie so i can give the name of the movie who's directed it uh what year it came out and do the um connection to our last film well, see, all I'm... of it dan geez i guess we'll just stand here and be quiet uh, you know what i'm gonna hang the fuck up I'm not gonna do this anymore. i like that arrangement dance of talent you and i get drunk and then Ruin the podcast with both the Ringo and dance every other Beatle. Yeah, I didn't want to insult you guys by calling you the Ringo. Tom can be the Ringo. You and I, we will share the responsibilities of being John and Paul. Okay, but then that means we don't have a George Harrison who's the real talent of the group. And uh, we're fucked. We are so fucked. Good evening, morning, or whatever. Welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Josh. I uh, am doing the introduction tonight because that's what we decided beforehand. So, um, no burp this, this week, Tom? Good. Real quick, the reason I don't sound like a potato tonight, I invested in a newer mic. So, thank <gasps> you, Tom, for, uh, for financing that. Yeah, and Wait, uh, what? I, I tried Wait. to get one today. What are these credit cards? Order it, Wait. but the card stopped working. So, Tom, you need to pay the bill because the card's not working. What, is, what are these calls look. to my... And I, I want one of those cool mics. This is a very high-quality mic. Yeah, and I really want to... $700! <laughs> Yeah, Tom, you still need to pay that bill, though. Seriously, the card's not working anymore. And uh, um, uh, I, I called them on the phone. On that? He probably hasn't gotten the bills. Yeah, well, I called them on the phone. Tom, your Tom... credit rating is like two. <laughs> so the Fire Pit podcast is named <laughs> after uh, we had a fire pit. I had a fire pit. It was a really nice fire pit. And every weekend we would get together and we would have burns. That's what we called them. And um, we would have some amazing conversations that lasted until four o'clock in the morning or whenever my wife came out and bitched us out for spending all night next to the fire. So that's where the name of this podcast comes from, in case you didn't know. Anywho, uh, I'll pass it off to Dan. Nigel. Well, all right. what, what, are we not going to like do other people introductions or just like and then just go to Dan? Introduce yourself and Dan? when you get to your part. Our fan base of like six bots <laughs> knows what they want. <laughs> all right. I'm Dan. And again, welcome to the podcast. Tonight we are watching Pathfinder, 2007 film, directed by Marcus Nispel. I don't even know who that is. And I haven't seen this movie yet, so we may find out why I don't know who that is. <laughs> or why we haven't heard from him since this film either. 29 <laughs> Metacritic score. I'm just saying that. We, we are definitely going to find out why we haven't heard of this director, or at least why I personally haven't heard of this director by the end of the night. Uh, no disrespect to Marcus Nispel, if the Marcus Nispel bot ever listens to this podcast. <laughs> Way to play to the crowd. Nice. Good hey, job. Um, guys, just real quick, I don't want to step on your toes here, Dan, but this guy, Marcus Nispel, has directed grand hits such as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, Conan the Barbarian with Jason Moma from 2011, and Tom and I's first date movie. Friday the 13th, circa 2009. Really? He did that one? That was yeah. actually a good one. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Friday the 13th, 2009 is, like, kind of forgettable, but I, I enjoyed it when I watched it. So Wait, yeah. that wasn't it. It was My Bloody Valentine 3D. That's right. It had oh, the yeah. other... Uh, it had the other Winchester supernatural guy. Yeah. Friday the 13th also had Jared Pad Padalecki and My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> and if I get this wrong... You can crucify me later. Had uh, Dean. Well, and I'll kick it over to Tom, who's going to tell us what the connection between this movie is and our last movie was. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. This is Tom, 
also known Thompson. Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, felt like we should sift through the uh, ashes of the last film. Let's, let's uh, check in, see what The Rock was doing. Um, he was our connector between The Run Rundown. Down. Thank you, Nigel. Yes. And, oh, Doom. what was that one? Doom. Film? Doom. Sorry. Doom. <laughs> Doom. Yes. This is, uh, it is forgettable. For, <laughs> or at least I'm trying to forget about it. But, so, I mean, it's just looking at The Rock. I mean... He's really not done much, guys. Just um, some show on HBO called Ballers, a movie series called I, I don't Fast and Furious. I don't. I, I've that never heard of it either. Movie, isn't it? It's something like that. It's a bunch of guys with Hot Wheels just mashing them into each other for two hours. I'd, uh, I mean, just some unknown stuff. But I think he's getting his big break, guys. He's going into superhero films next. He's slated to be in a movie adaptation of the '90s comic series hold on to your pants ball and chain yes yes i know we've been waiting for this one so you, you I, I can't think... adapt marvel movies anymore because <laughs> of the money well this is a disney one no wait no it's not no it's not it's a different one the premise is a couple that's going through a divorce gets struck by a meteor and gets superpowers and hilarity ensues it's being written by emily v gordon um with her husband kumail nanjiani the same couple that wrote the big sick uh which is like a romantic comedy thing where a uh, uber driver sleeps with uh someone and then hilarity ensues and i apologize to kumail about mispronouncing his last name i have a sicilian tongue so every name i pronounce sounds like they came off the set of godfather so Rock is going to be starring with his uh, Jungle Cruise co-star. I have her name down here. It is Emily Blunt. And I just shot you both a screen cap of one of the pages of this comic. And it took uh, one or two liberties of uh, the, the character The Rock's going to be playing here. But that's what he's got going on. It you know, was It's played... one of those things. They're really, I don't want to say scraping the bottom of the barrel because there's some legitimately good comics out there that mm -hmm. are not Marvel. Or DC. And they're doing a great job of adapting some of these. Like, The Boys? Great. Mm. I'm still waiting for a irredeemable show. That's probably one of my favorite comic books in general. It's basically, for those of you who don't know, the story of the Justice League. They're just all off-brand characters. Like, uh, mm -hmm. instead of Superman, you have the Plutonian. But it's basically what happens if he just, you know, he was not raised by the Kents and just flips his shit. He's just like, mm -hmm. you know what? Fuck you. I'm God. I'm going to do what I want. And this is everybody trying to stop him. I highly recommend it. And speaking of the boys, <laughs> Carl <laughs> Urban is in the boys, and Carl Urban is also the star of tonight's movie. See what we did there? That was totally <laughs> intentional, I promise. <laughs> As Carl Urban was in Doom last week with The Rock, we've decided to go with a Carl Urban film tonight. Um, yeah, I, I guess the obvious choices would have been either Dread or uh, the uh, second and third Lord of the Rings movies, but... Well, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies are three hours long, and that's not the special editions. That would make for a long night. And Dread, uh, Dread's a good film, but this one is might be bad. So we wanted to see what this one's all about. And this one holds <clears throat> a special distinction, because this is the first time in our years of doing this podcast that uh, all three of us have not seen this movie. Yeah, that's <clears throat> another reason why we picked it. No, none of us have seen this movie. We've all seen the Star Trek reboots, and Carl Urban's in all of those We've seen uh, Dread. He's in that, obviously, and obviously the Lord of the Rings movies, especially the second and third one. He's in those. We've all seen them. Kind of wanted to go into a movie cold. So mm -hmm. we're going into this one for that reason. Yeah, although, personally, I we do know of this film by sort of um, in-joke reputation. We, uh, we had a game years back where we tried to determine what film would be the highest grossing any weekend. And and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Reginald. You're wrong. Uh, okay. Dan, Dan, Dan do you want to tell him this time? Because he apparently just ignores me. <laughs> uh, you're, you're wrong. I'm wrong. No, Tom, th this is not that movie. I've said it multiple times. That movie was Outlander. The not, you know, soggy TV show from 2000, whatever, late teens. It was like two years later after this one or the next year. I forget what it was. That was the one starring Jim Caviezel. That's the one that has Vikings versus aliens that was premiering in like 100 theaters. And you thought that that would take top one in the top 10 of the box office that weekend. It just made sense. I mean, Vikings versus aliens. It, 
So tell me, Nigel, what is this film about? What is Pathfinder about? It's Well, again, I've not seen it, so I'm just going to go off the IMDb synopsis here. But it says a Viking boy is left behind after his clan battles a Native American tribe. Raised within oh. the tribe, he ultimately becomes their savior in a fight against the Norsemen. So it looks like it's it's Vikings versus Native Americans, not Vikings versus aliens. But that's the IMDb synopsis. I have not seen this movie. I did not watch it ahead of this podcast, and I've not read any of the other synopsis that give away spoilers. So I have no idea. I don't know what twists and turns are in this movie. I really don't know what to expect other than the always fantastic Clancy Brown is also in this movie. It and my God, his career speaks for itself. Spoiler alert, we're going to do a Clancy Brown movie next week. Because, I am looking forward to that one. Because yeah. that man's acting tree just goes all the way down to the center of the earth. And he is just amazing in just about everything he does. Oh, so, I already know the movie we're going to do. Wife was watching Square Pants. Was he really in SpongeBob? He's Mr. Krabs. Yeah, he's Mr. Krab in SpongeBob, Tom. Well, excuse me for not paying attention to the credits. Holy I mean, cow. It's, so, it's just so funny. My, my wife has been watching old ER reruns or ER on net, on Hulu or something over the last, since we've been on shutdown. And Clancy Brown had a bit part in one of the early seasons in ER. And once he left, I stopped paying attention to it with her. I'm like, eh, I'm just going to put my headphones on and just not, not pay attention to ER anymore because I love Clancy Brown. He's also the voice of Lex Luthor in all of the um, Dinnyverse DC productions, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League Unlimited, all that good stuff. Uh, Clancy Brown is the voice of Lex Luthor, probably one of the better voice actors to be in, uh, mm-hmm. in Lex Luthor, although uh, that's a tangent for another day, but... But, uh, you know, and Clancy Brown's probably also famous for, you know, he's the Kurgan in Highlander, where he actually legitimately creeped out nuns during filming when he said, I I cut off his head and I raped his woman before his blood was even cold. Those nuns that get up and immediately cross themselves in that church are real nuns who were legitimately freaked out by a bald Clancy Brown in, in a leather, a cut off leather jacket with like one sleeve missing and his head's clearly been shaven with a rusty blade without a mirror. They agreed to be in the movie. The, the nuns were in the movie because they were already in the church when they were filming and the, and the director asked them if they wanted to be in the film. And mm-hmm. they said yes. And they were serving as extras. They didn't know he was going to say that line. <laughs> He says that line, and oh my god, those nuns are legitimately like, holy shit! <laughs> like, and they get up and they cross themselves. Uh, the, 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 he did, and yeah, Clancy Brown's amazing, amazing. He's, he, he's always good. So I'm actually kind of, even though this is looking like it's going to be a bad film, or at least not a great one, I'm looking forward to Clancy Brown. I just I like to watch him in movies, even bad yeah, movies. Just, he's always there, so he always gives it his all. Do. He always gives it his all. And Carl Urban's a good actor, too. I mean, he was good in Doom, you know, even though that movie sucked. I like him in The Boys. I've watched The Boys. I think that's a good show. Um, he was in another TV show called, I think, Almost Human. He was really good in that, too. Oh, yeah, I heard that, was that really one. That good show. That was yeah. a good show. I was disappointed yeah. when that show was canceled. Yeah, and also, uh, and of course, he's he's probably one of the best parts about the Star Trek reboots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Carl well, Urban is good, so. And I look forward to talking more about him. I'm just looking at his Twitter feed. And it is just spectacular. It's like someone pointed out, it's like, you can say cunt. You're an Aussie. You know an Aussie and know the meaning. You can do it. And Carl Urban just replied, I'm a Kiwi. You daft cunt. <laughs> yeah. The I, invisible he, cunt. That's one of my favorite <laughs> lines from the boys. I think we pointed out, too, he's been in a lot of action films. Yeah, Carl Urban's done a lot of action movies. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, I don't think there's a movie that Carl Urban's been in that I haven't liked. Pathfinder not, Withstanding, because we haven't seen it yet. It the, other, like I, I seen the other named actress, um, yeah, Moon Bloodgood, she's not as famous as Clancy Brown or Carl Urban, but I've got her IMDb page up and she's, she's been in she's some been things in something that we've recognized. Uh, Terminator. She Terminator. was in Terminator Salvation. Terminator Salvation. Yeah, she's in the, the Christian Bale throws a fit on set movie, Terminator movie. <laughs> enough is the best post Terminator two movie. Understandably a low bar to clear, but after <laughs> watching dark fate, which God help us all, if we ever get to that movie, Terminator Salvation is, is the best post T2 Terminator movie. He, she was also in a movie with the rock called faster. Was got that a- one movie after the rock got off of his Disney contract. Yep. So she's connected to our last actor, The Rock, in that. And then now, obviously, now she's connected to Carl Urban in this film. And then she was in the TV show Falling Sky. And I guess she's currently on NCIS Los Angeles. So she's had a pretty decent career, too. 
you know, she's kind of hot. Okay, here's where I know her from, obviously. The 1997 video game Nuclear Strike. Remember that that isometric helicopter game for... Oh, my God. Yeah. I had yeah. that game. I played the hell out of that game. Dude, that game I was know. awesome. Dude. Oh, my God. You know, I know this isn't a video game podcast, but honestly, the Strike games, like Nuclear Strike, Urban Strike, all those games, those are games I'm Desert surprised strike. they haven't. Oh, my God, those were so good. I'm surprised right. that that's a game series that hasn't been rebooted or retried for current-gen systems now. I'm just, you know. Yeah, but that, that's a tangent a- for another day. We're never going to get the movie started if I go on that yeah. tangent. So, <laughs> we could easily go on that tangent. Yeah, I could I could spend the next two and a half well, hours. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, if that. we get too, m- many more bots attached to following our podcast and we know that we get our, our, our loyal AI following, we might <laughs> do another uh, Fire Pit podcast that's just related to video games. So our, my th- our three listeners, aka the three hosts and our army of bots that follow us. Um, Speaking of Terminator Salvation. <laughs> we, uh... That, that, that's where we get the name of this uh, podcast, which ho- hopefully within the next year or so, and after this whole COVID bullshit gets done with, we'll be able to continue that uh, tradition once I get a new fire pit built at my new house. Knock on wood. Yes, sir. All it's right, Tom, I gotta, it's time to open a beer. All right. I got my cooler next to me. I'm prepared. <laughs> okay, I John. I can't roam gonna... now that I have this stationary mic, so I sacrifice mobility for quality. So uh, what should I go for here? Um, I got two types of beer. Line and Googles, or I got two two of my uh, or fat tires, my Belgium whites. I'd say Line and Google, because I'm sure as the night and drinking progresses, that name's just going to be easier and easier for you to say. And it's I'm just honestly be- proud of myself that I got it in the first try this time. Honestly, We're not- I'm going to go with a new Belgium, because the summer shandies are mm-hmm, mm-hmm. still cooling. Ah, no, fair enough. I'm going stout on this spring day uh, with a uh, Zaftig Razzy Galore, a cherry stout. I am jelly. Here, here, here. Listen, listen. That didn't have a very... No, no that came out. Night. I'll uh, tweak it in post. I'll give it that nice, you know... There you go. Yeah, here's my... I basically have a thermos of beer, so uh, <laughs> that's why I like right. Zaftig. They do thermoses of beer, so it's like, I'm, I'm not thirsty enough for a whole growler, but yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll take a tall boy worth. So, anywho, do we want to discuss any more about Mr. Urban? Uh, I think we've covered the bases. We, we talked about him a lot, too, last week when we went into Doom, so um, <laughs> we've, we've talked about Carl Urban at length. Uh, I say we just uh, we get the movie started, and... Um, I'm looking forward to our uh, post-movie conversation because, again, this is the first time all three of us are going into a movie cold. Uh, well, I'm kind of looking we... forward to all three of us having a different perspective of a movie neither of us has seen. So shall we uh, get this started? Yes, let's, let's get, get this started. Going. Uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of The Fire Pit. This is Tom, your better editor, and the best part of waking up. Mm. Welcome to our viewing of Pathfinder. This movie was a fun one for us. You see, everyone talks about the bottom of the barrel, but we had the rare privilege of finding that bottom. So, to those people who were responsible for making Pathfinder, from the most sincere parts of our hearts, No new announcements yet, though in the next week or so, we're hoping to get an email set up. This will not only give us a chance to get your thoughts and suggestions, but most importantly, your sponsorships. And on that note, for a sample of the kind of quality copy that you can expect from us here at the Fire Pit, a special word from Dan and Josh. In these trying times, you need to purchase our vaginal massagers because we are an essential service providing all these lonely housewives in uh, these trying times. In these trying times, we know, I mean, it's not like you couldn't, you couldn't find a date before this started and you're definitely, you're hopeless now. So definitely this is a product for you. This is a product for all, but mostly you. We are really care about our customers. And in these trying times, it normal isn't normal. And we are out and we want to make sure everybody is okay. We really care about you. Did we say that enough? We really care about you. We, we love... really care. We really care about you in these trying times. So please buy our product because we need to get as much money as we can during these trying times. 
And remember, we're all in this together. Well, you're in it by yourself. But this is what we're supposed to say. Yes, because the government is giving us all the money that we need, but we still need your money. You're expected to save for a rainy day. We can just spend recklessly without abandon. So next time you're at the store and care about the, your fellow people, definitely pick up our product because it is an essential product that you need during these trying times. Did we get that point across? We're in this together. Sad babies. <laughs> Sad babies. <laughs> All right, back to the episode. Thank you again for joining us, and as always, good luck. You seriously need to pay that bill, Tom. The card's not working anymore. When I called them today, they were very rude. He seriously needs to pay that bill. $300. It really does. Oh, shit! (laughs) We made it, guys! Oh, shit! Holy shit. Well, that was... uh, you know, out of all the movies I've ever seen in my life, that was one of them. But for the past two films we've seen, you've said this, Nigel, this was a film. Yeah, yeah, this was definitely a movie. Um, <laughs> you know, oh. I, I'd have to say, unlike last week's movie, uh, Doom, the last Doom movie had at least the pretty cool first-person scene and the pretty neat fight scene to go out on. This movie was just bogged down. By everything. We had what tried to pass as plot. Josh, come to the microphone. I know you're you're getting a beer way across the other side of the room, but come come closer. Um Okay, so yeah, at least Doom had you know some semblance of a plot. And yeah, we didn't get our first monster till about forty minutes in, but you were at least entertained for half of that time. This movie, it's like we didn't get a decent scene that we wanted to pay attention to until about 90 minutes into the film. And it's just like, can we finish already? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I didn't have a reason to care about any of the characters, especially Carl Urban's character, who was supposed to be the protagonist. I didn't care about any of his tribe. I didn't get the sense that there was any sort of connection between the Viking chief. And Carl Urban's character, even though I think they were trying to express that there was like, hey, this is my son. He grew up to be a warrior after all. Yeah, that's my boy. It comes off like it should have that hero's journey, but it just fails miserably. Mm -hmm. And during the film itself, while we were watching this, you pointed out, it's like everything that Kevin Smith bitched about with The Lord of the Rings, if they're, they're just three films about walking. This was that film. If they're just walking, there's shit happening around them, and then the ending happens. It's just, this movie, according to IMDb, this movie cost $45 million. Like, the only thing I can think is is that the Viking costumes were a good... I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I can't think of any other word to describe it other than boring blah. Just, yeah. It just was boring. It, I mean... I didn't quite half understand the plot and I was trying and now I know we were talking over a lot of the movie and all that, but I couldn't piece together what was really going on. Mm -hmm. And once I could piece together what was going on, I didn't fucking care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like like the movie should make you care about the characters where he stabbed the, uh, I guess the tribal leader in the stomach during a dream sequence. I feel like that should have had impact, but it didn't. It was shocking. It got all of our attention. And then we went back to, Talking about math. <laughs> yeah. We got to the point where we were discussing percentage drops in box office uh, returns from weekend yeah. to weekend for like a large portion of this movie while we were watching yeah. it. We also discussed which non-Bumblebee Transformers movie was the best one. The answer is none of them. And <laughs> But we legit, we were having that argument. We were talking about, and again, for those listening, Carl Urban is in exactly zero Transformers movies as of right now. And according to IMDb, he's not going to be in any soon. Yeah. So <laughs> we were talking about a completely different franchise, and it's a franchise we don't really care for. But that being said, Transformers is still more watchable than this movie. At least there's something going on. And for $10 a month, you too could be a Patreon subscriber to hear us talk about an entirely different film from the film we actually watched. Sign up now. And also for our six bot viewers, probably seven now, we don't have a Patreon yet. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, this movie was not good and very deserving of that... Was it 29 Metacritic score? 
So that was January. No, honestly, the, the worst part about this movie is it started off and it had promise. Like, watching mm-hmm. it, it's like, oh, the cinematography ain't bad. And then it's like the action was good. It was, you know, g- graphic and it, it was captivating. But then the problem is, is it's like he forgot to turn off that filter. And yeah. then yeah. just phoned in the rest of the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, now we're going to go to a mountaintop. Now we're going to go to the bottom of a river. No, I don't know what the fuck. We're somewhere else. I liken it to The Revenant, only badly done. An incompetent Revenant. I haven't seen The Revenant, so I can't comment, but... Revenant is nothing but scenery porn, essentially. This film, in the right hands, could have been at least scenery porn, but it wasn't in the right hands. I feel like there was something that could have been good in this movie. Oh, the potential's there. We all saw the potential... The, the costumes for the Vikings, we compared and contrasted this to 300, which came out just technically slightly before this. A but you could before. definitely A month before. But there's some similarities in how, like, you have the hero storytellers in 300. The Persians were these monstrous, otherworldly, almost caricatures that you could barely describe as humans. Whereas the Spartans were also... Just like Pilates, every day for life, keto lifestyle, just awesome characters. But here's like, it was a little more grounded. The Vikings were terrifying, but they were inhumanly terrifying. And the Native American tribes were, yeah, they were the underdogs, clearly in terms of everything. They were present. Everything. Like, there was yeah, that they one pre- scene where they, yeah. got, they, they, they fell into the trap by the Vikings. And I'm just like, is this supposed to affect me? Am yeah, I supposed to be like, emotionally tied to any of these characters? Yeah. Yeah, we, we caught the, the thing as they started to fall in. And we're like, oh, this is not interesting. Let's go back to what we were doing. Yeah, it's just... Mm. uh. I think when we got to the trap scene, once again, like your movie's supposed to make you care about the characters. So I, mm-hmm. I understood through the musical cues and the uh, action going on the screen that that was supposed to be an emotional moment. However, I don't give a shit about any of these characters, so mm-hmm. I'm not feeling any of it. I got that the tribal leader was important and we should care about him just because they gave enough cues and there was like one or two scenes like they were walking through the cave and like one of the guys like almost trips and the female protagonist i can't remember her character's name i don't think they even gave her character's name but she like that's the other thing is i have to look up all of these characters name i couldn't tell you any of them by watching this movie i have to go to imdb to be like oh uh Whoever Clancy Brown character's name is, uh, Kurgan? Wait, wrong movie. Okay, he's, <laughs> he's, he's Viking Kurgan. Wait, wasn't the Kurgan already a Viking? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> you got that you should care because it's a movie and this is the protagonist, this is the love interest, this is the villain, this is, like, the comic relief. These are people you are just going to die. That's it bare minimum of story no one gave a reason to care yeah it just it it wasn't a good movie and how much did it cost to make again 40 according to imd 45 million according to imdb 20 bucks i was just a tax write-off well it could have been a tax (laughs) write-off or it could have been like the viking costumes and stuff did look nice and the camera work was pretty good so i imagine a good chunk of the budget went into that and it did look like they used mostly locate real locations and effects and and whatnot as opposed to um cg everywhere although the blood was clearly cg but yeah just um i don't know it was just like i said it just wasn't a good movie and it shows it's a shame because nancy it, brown it had uh, potential it had potential you can see the potential in it now it's not one of those movies where you can see the good movie trying to get out it no the movie's bad all the way around but batman, v, was, batman was... v superman is the is an example of a movie where you can see the good movie that wanted to be there but couldn't wasn't invited to the party but mm-hmm. um this movie was not a good movie trying to get out of a bad movie this was just potential completely untapped unused potential and yeah. apparently well, it's a remake of a scandinavian movie and the original writer director whoever of the scandinavian film hates it with a passion so that's got to tell you something so it's like they took everything that made the original worthy of having a remake and just you know flushed it well, well um, i'm just going to go off the description of the 1987 quote-unquote original by nils galp a young Sami man named Aiken comes home one day to find his parents and his sisters butchered. So it's sort of um, a revenge sort of film. It's not even a remake. It's just like 
someone had a script like this is good but we also had this other script and this is a good name for a film so let's just take this script and put it under this name they just like the name that's really it well it looked like this movie was going to start off as a revenge movie because it had some some elements of that especially when he goes and sees his original village burnt and destroyed and his his mom's obviously dead and all that it looked like it was going to be a revenge film it just kind of felt like it just i don't know it just it felt like it wanted to be other things and none of them were good things fell apart after the first five minutes yeah it, it, it really yeah. does yeah I, you think it's like one of those films where you have like you have some people who are you see potential in them as like a film company He's like, oh, this director's good, but he's not blockbuster good. Let's give him this film, give him some experience, let's see what they can do. You think maybe it was those one of those kind of films? Uh, it's very possible. Like, give him, I mean, give him our uh, the shitty IP and a shitty script, and may- maybe we can uh, he'll mm-hmm. he'll, he'll uh, grow to be something better. Look, look at the shit that uh, James Cameron did Piranha Two before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> doing uh, terminator so yeah they've all done some stinkers they're no one you know they've all done stinkers in their life uh before they made it big yeah um, we'll give them a crappy script and if they make something good from this hey we've got a blockbuster win us if we lose well it was a crappy script anyways we weren't expecting anything from this to begin with this is a tax write-off it was a xanatos gambit the studio was going to win anyways. It's like it's not like anybody's going to remember this in four, 13 years. Yeah. Geek will see this. That's fine. Geeks love Vikings. They're good. <laughs> Geeks love Vikings. Yeah. What's going to happen? 14 years from now, it's going to be on some shitty podcast. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> A bunch of douchebags from Ohio are going to watch this film and talk shit about us. Oh, Whatever God, will we do? <laughs> Broke a sweat hey, over be that. Careful. We are followed by, like, bots, yeah. robots, and artificial intelligence. Yeah. And if we hey. ever get to Terminator Salvation or Terminator Dark Fate, we want to say good things about these robots. Yes, we can't yeah. insult them. We yeah. must We <laughs> must talk shit about uh, humans. Humans bad. Yeah, humans very well, well, humans clearly like shitty films, but the bots like the quality entertainment. And there's, there's fun, bad movies. Troll mm. 2. You yeah, watch there's that movies because that are so... it's so bad. Yeah, there this are movie movies is just like, so because why did we do this to ourselves? Because Carl Urban was in it, and proto Carl Urban is still yeah, a like... great actor. That's what's the frustrating part about this. There's potential, and I think in the right films, like uh, this is not a movie that I would remake if given the choice. This is not one of those franchises that I look at and like, man, this one. See, the that problem with remaking this like... film is you're gonna you got two options. You could go super sci-fi crazy crazy off the wall shit or b mm-hmm. dances with wolves and vikings dances and with where... wolves and Vi- it was was literally a one okay i would say once thing but it seemed to work for um avatar but mm-hmm. the chances of you remaking this and being good slim the only way mm-hmm. you could actually make this and possibly make it a popcorn film is if you go off the wall and this one yeah. was almost off the wall it was just boring and that's why so, I was I'd thinking. Like, I, I wouldn't offer. I, I wouldn't want to remake this. <laughs> I, got, I got an idea. I got an idea. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take after about the first ten minutes of the movie, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then maybe up to the scene where people, they, the Vikings, right before they tie each other together, and you're going to just cut all of that middle stuff out, and you're just okay. going to film somebody walking. I think it would be a hundred times more exciting than the current film that's out there. Mm. here's the thing here's the thing you can't cut the exact amount of time it's got to be like six hours it's walking in real time is what you're saying here but you know cinematically so and there needs to be at least like an hour-long segment where he just stares off into the sunset okay i'm not i'm gonna stop you there i'm stopping you there because you've essentially just remade revenant no wait no there is a bear in this film Fuck. Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Photoshop Revenant out of the title, put Pathfinder, and sell it to them. And I'll just, you know, put a shitty Photoshop on top of Leonardo DiCaprio's face of uh, Carl Urban and just ship that as a uh, Pathfinder 2. No, better yet, we're not going to be making it. We're going to make a sequel. Pathfinder yes, 2. Pathfinder 2. 2. This time it's personal. Like, <laughs> it's even no, better. Okay, it's- like, he goes to Norway this time. He goes to, like, Scandinavia to kill the Vikings in their home country. 
only this time, the Vikings weren't there. They were already attacked by, fuck it, aliens. Aliens versus... No, this is Native no, Americans no, no, versus like Vikings Viking versus, versus Viking. aliens. Aliens versus Native Americans and Vikings. Oh, and the Native Americans and the Vikings can team up against the aliens. Oh, see, God. See we're going. This will be bigger than Endgame. Bigger than Endgame? Oh, shit. Yes, it'll be called the Pathfinder ex- uh, Cinematic Universe. And we'll... Um, We'll interconnect a bunch of movies in the Pathfinder verse, and then we'll we'll have uh, we'll make it so that um, Clancy Brown's character actually comes back to life, and he's behind the whole thing. Time travel—that's what we need to do. We'll incorporate time. The aliens bring time travel technology, and yes. they send this group of. Uh, that'll be the twist at the end of the sequel. Is they'll send like like the aliens are losing so they activate the secret weapon and then it sends the native americans and the vikings 100 years into the future and and about 3 quarters of the way into the movie we hang dong <laughs> yes! yes yes it works on every level let's do a quick round table let's see any final thoughts on pathfinder and uh, cuz we we are leaving uh, carl urban uh, behind with this one so whoop, 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 any parting whoop. thoughts thompson you first don't let de- us be the canary in this mine shaft. We're not even getting paid to do this. Yeah, <laughs> say Funny. follow the Baron review and just watch the action scenes. Fast forward through everything else. Yeah, because there's really there's I don't know maybe maybe it's because we were watching a version that could that didn't have any of the translated subtitles, so I missed some of the exposition. Did you not have characters? subtitles on because I'd add. I did. No, I, did. I, did. I didn't either. I'm afraid to touch them. I'm afraid to touch them now. Every time, last time I tried to turn on subtitles, I, I slowed us down for 45 minutes. I, I just saw that uh, there was no, well, I mean, I didn't have subtitles, so I maybe I missed some of the exposition and some of the character work, but yeah, I really didn't was, give a like, shit. I had I really, subtitles, and like, whenever Kurgan was speaking, you know, he did talk, but I couldn't tell you a damn thing what he said because it was so generic dialogue. Well, it's a generic film with decent costuming and competent cinematography. Okay, I'll I would all- say no 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 they they hired this is clearly a situation where they hired the cinematographer for the first 30 minutes of the movie and then they fired him and they just kept doing what he was doing cuz it looked easy. We really should look up the history of this film. No, no, no I don't I want know, to invest no, any more energy no. in this film. Anywho, and party also- thoughts. Uh, my parting thoughts are is that if you want to erase this movie from your plex, it's okay because I doubt I'm never going to want to watch it again. So, uh, yeah, um, it's just I don't know. It's uh, it's it, it's not even Jello. Like it, Doom was at least Jello. Well, yeah, you know. it's like yeah. I was even thinking about that earlier. It's not a Taco Bell film because it's something that you won't like, but you pay for it later. No, you pay for this while you're eating it. This yeah. is literally eating out of the dumpster. Yeah, this is Jack in the Box. Yeah, this, like I said, it's it's not Doom is at least Jello. Like it tastes good and all that. It just there was nothing there when it was over. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is nothing. It was a bunch of nothing. It just I don't know the plot. If there was one, I didn't get it. I couldn't make any sense. And I don't think it's one of those movies where I didn't get the plot because it was too smart for me. You know, like, no, <laughs> this isn't. This isn't like this. Uh, no, the movie's not too smart. It's because there's no plot to get, and but you're trying to find it anyways. Yeah, and also I really do hate that argument most of the time with movies. I got a friend who keeps trying to defend Batman v Superman because he keeps saying it's just too smart and most of the audience didn't get it. That's, no, it's not. No, that's what dumb story. people say when they don't understand the movie. No, yeah, that's, yeah, or they don't understand why no one likes the thing that they like. Like, and they, it's, it's universally hated. It's like, you know, and then also he's another one of those conspiracy theorists that thinks that, you know, critics and everyone that hated Batman v Superman are just people paid off by Disney. I never got a single check from Disney, and I thought that movie was trash. So, really, you didn't get that check? Because I got, oh, I mean, no, I didn't get that check either. No, no. I definitely didn't get that check. My parting thoughts are this movie wasn't very good. Just avoid it. Uh, uh, one out of one, I'll give it one out of four stars. Because at least the cinematography was pretty decent, and the, I loved the Vikings costume designs, but um, and the action scenes were were pretty well shot. But other than that, just there's nothing to the movie, and it's not even worth watching for the action scenes. Some movies are are worth watching just for the action scenes. This is not one of them. Yeah, it's mm. like 
If you're going to watch the movie, or this will be my parting thoughts. If you're going to watch this movie, if you are dead set on watching this movie, like after maybe the first 10 minutes, once he gets to the snowy top, start fast forwarding it. And you, you can pause on dialogue scenes, but it's going to be useless. And then mm-hmm. just keep fast forwarding. Stop at a couple action scenes. Keep fast forwarding. You're going to cut that hour and 47 run time into about 13, 14 minutes. You're going to appreciate us. Trust me. We suffered this film. This movie was not by any stretch of the word good. It was (laughs) definitely, it's like, it was beautifully shot in the first 10 minutes. It was gruesome. It was graphic. Um, There was definitely some, it's like one of those things. It's like everybody showed up. Everybody wanted this movie to be good. So they gave it their all. And then they realized it was crap. And then they're just like phoned it in the rest of it. Like you could tell the cinematography at the very beginning of this film was really well done. I, I really like the dark colors that they used and how they contrasted against some of the other lighter colors, especially when it got to the snowy top scene. It, it, it came out of nowhere, but I thought that it was the contrast between the dark and the light of the colors was really well done. Had no relevance to the story like some some decent movies do, but it looked good. It looked pretty. But then the problem is, is that's the same thing they maintained. There was... There was a color palette to this film, and it was about the same after I eat really shitty <laughs> high fiber food. Like I, I couldn't even get drunk watching this movie because I was at least enjoying myself while watching Doom. This one, I'm just like, I don't want to waste beer on this film. Like I said, it's just there's not much to it. I, I don't know how many more ways I can say this movie's bad. It's a bad movie. You know, mm-hmm. um, like and, and, and unlike some of the other bad movies we've watched, there's almost no redeeming qualities. You know, mm-hmm. there's just nothing there. Like literally, the only know, two things we keep coming back to is cinematography and costumes. Yeah, but I'm not. But if I want to watch a movie with good cinematography and costumes, I'm just going to watch the Lord of the Rings because at least it has a good plot. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Said, Lord of, you don't Lord watch of, this movie because of cinematography and yeah, costumes. Like Lord of the Rings has movie. Lord of the Rings has great cinematography, fantastic costumes. It also has wonderful dialogue, great music, uh, characters, and a really good story. You know that I get heavily invested in. So yeah, if I want to watch, yeah. I, I'll just watch that. You know, yeah. it's like I don't go to a restaurant because they have one good thing on the menu that also happens to be just a side dish. Like no one goes to if, if a restaurant has a bad cheeseburger but good fries, you don't eat there, no matter how good the fries are. You might stop and get some fries on the way home from work, but you're never going to eat at that restaurant, and you're never going to make a point to eat there. Even more accurate to this film, it's like, yeah, the restaurant looked good, the table settings were great, the the, the decor was fine, but the food was just just your cafeteria schlock. Why, why do we keep going back to comparing movies to food? Do we it's do we have a easy. problem? I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're hungry. I think it's for hungry. I think we're, we're hungry. very hungry. But yeah, it's like it's like to continue that that metaphor, and the wait staff was really rude and shitty, or didn't show up. <laughs> They never refilled your glass. So I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that this this movie, yeah, we keep going back to cinematography. We keep going back to costumes. But I'm not going to watch the movie just for that. Yeah, those are watch the only two redeeming factors, yeah. but they aren't enough to make, you wa- make us also, watch this movie ever again. Uh, also, mm-hmm. um, Doom, which was another movie we watched last week, which was bad. I'm not defending Doom in any way. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Doom didn't have great costumes and didn't have good cinematography, but it was still entertaining on some level. Like, it still had some decent action scenes. I know Tom's not a fan of it. I love the first person scene. I love the final fight between the two of them at the end. I liked the character of Sarge a lot. I liked Rock's character in the movie. And I liked Carl Urban's character in the movie. So those movies are missing cinematography and costume, but I still watch them and enjoy it. Not enjoy, enjoy, but I can still get the meat of it. This movie Mm -hmm. has good cinematography and good costumes, but the rest of the movie was just, ugh. Well, you know, that, to, to, to yeah. go off of Doom, like I watched Doom Annihilation, terrible mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. And do not take this as any way, shape, or form I am promoting or encouraging you to watch this movie. I enjoyed watching that movie more than I enjoyed watching this movie. Because at least watching that movie, I could laugh at the movie. This one, I'm just like, are you over yet? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, one, was, this one was a slog to get through. This one was just a hard movie to get through. Yeah, it's and, like you got that you got that sl- that uh, scale. Like one side is a movie you enjoy and you want to watch, and the other side is like like a movie that is so bad you want to finish it. Yeah. But it's like when you're in the middle, it's like not good enough to finish watching, but it's not bad enough 
to be a bunny. So it's like this movie is like right in the center, maybe a little bit to the left. You watch yeah. it because it is such a bad film, or it's a such it's a definitely an example of what not to do. Yeah, and like I said, this just I can't. I'm, I'm I've run out of ways to describe how bad this movie is, so I'm just gonna come out and say it's bad. But anyway, next week. It next like week we're we gonna watch Starship Troopers, and uh, I think. Yeah, I think we're all going. I know we're all going. I know this is another movie that the three of us are going to go into. We've all seen it. Um, we all seem to have the same opinion on it that we liked it. It's an enjoyable movie, and we like it. Some, I think Josh probably likes it a little more than we do. Tom and I do, mm-hmm. but I mean, you know, it's. I haven't seen it in its entirety in a long time, so I am kind of going in not cold, but definitely lukewarm. I haven't seen this movie in a long, long time. I've um, seen this. I've seen it a few times, but it's like. Um, um, oh shoot, it's not MST3K, but the um, Rift Tracks. I've seen a Rift Track or two of it. So it's for me, it's like, I enjoy it though. It's one of those films, like, it's not a good film in the classical Oscar sense, but yeah, it's a popcorn film. Thank you, Josh. Like, you watch it while eating popcorn. This film was like a film you would turn off because you can't even stand to listen to it. This is definitely a movie where uh, I I I'd have, I would have had a hard time sitting yeah. in the movie theater. If I didn't it. have you guys on on call right to watch it, I wouldn't have finished it. Oh no! If if we weren't recording us watching this, I would have suggested, guys, can we watch something else? Dude, halfway Anything through, else? I was like, almost like, can we just switch to Dread? <laughs> Uh, well, hey, gentlemen. As always, it's been awesome, and I yeah, it has. It's been great. Before next week, which I know I will. Oh, I've been Tom. Um, I've been Dan, and I've been Josh. This has been the Fire Pit. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Later. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace.